Namaste. Welcome. Today's topic is the nada. Nada are subtle sound frequencies or vibrations we experience and hear during deep meditative states. But it's the brain you know, listening you could hear them, not the external ears. So the nada is different from the external sounds we hear. So the nada comes from the inside. It's a byproduct of the kundalini energy piercing through the nerve clusters of the energetic system. We call them the chakras. And as the kundalini energy makes its way up, yeah, it will irrigate yeah, those dormant yeah, channels. And this will produce different sound vibrations and frequencies. Also common are sensations, electrical current, yeah, fell through the body, yeah, and even visions yeah, or images as we yeah, meditate. And also uh, extra sensitivity of our sensorial senses. All right, now, I will be relating my experiences to you. So these are actual stories of mine. And it's so interesting to realize that even without us going through the intense hundreds or even thousands of theoretical study, if they happen to us organically, you know, we understand the essence of the many books we encounter and read you know, or study so effortlessly because we experience them firsthand. So experience is the highest form of knowledge. Yeah, so aside from uh, studying the theory, I really encourage you to a lot, yeah, more time in your practice of the techniques, the asana, pranayamas, meditations, mudras. Yeah, this will all help you, you know, refine your sensitivities and enrich your knowledge. Now, and the teachers do. Yeah, the teachers who've walked this path, the past, the present, they all experience the same. And then bless you teachers for sharing your gift and your teachings. May your lessons grow. Yeah, bless you. Now, thank you for doing the service to the world. Now going back to our lesson. Yeah, so the nada, I can um, group them into like three or four stages. Yeah, The first stage is when the kundalini energy is just uh, flowing out. Yeah, uh, from its, I say, sleep or dormancy. And then the sound we hear or experience during this stage is quite rumbling, intense, deep, and loud. Yeah, so I clearly remember that first time I've experienced this nada. I was relaxing, yeah, you know, one afternoon, and then suddenly this intense, you know, loud sound filled my brain like the sound of the lightning strike or the thunder but it's never ending it's so loud and intense but not scary annoying loud it's penetrating you know, like the brain gets suddenly filled with this you know, loud uh, penetrating resonance or frequency like like that yeah, inside the brain. Yeah, but the he the ears, yeah, are passive. Yeah, they're normal, but the brain could hear this intense sound, and I could, yeah, um, I say compare the sound, yeah, with uh, the sound of the gong. Yeah, if you've heard, yeah, someone strikes the gong, yeah, so uh, I say strongly and hardly. And the sound it produces could be heard across the the room, so that's the the sound. Yeah, but more intense than that, like so this doesn't even come close. Uh, just imagine hundreds or even thousands as deep and as penetrating and as loud as this. Yeah, but I've, as I've mentioned, it's not uh, annoyingly loud, but penetrating loud inside the brain. 
All right. So many months into your practice, the, the first type of nada, I remember it happened to me that particular afternoon. The following day it happened again, and it happened for like three to five or six consecutive days. And each time I experience this sound, I will go into this deep meditative state. You know, the first stages of the samadhi experience, and you can feel you know, the electricity you know, rise. Yeah, and exit your physical entity. Yeah, so you travel around, but you know, yeah, you're grounded because your brain, yeah, is awake. Yeah, it's like you are separating your consciousness, yeah, from the physical. You know, you're there. You know, you're meditating. You're aware of your environment, but the other part of it, yeah, um, is witnessing, yeah, the uh, the other realm, so to speak. Now. As you gain more efficiency managing your energetic system, definitely you will become better managing the breath, the, um, the bandhas become more, I said, developed, and then your nadis become more purified, the chakras become more sensitive, the sound yeah, mellows down. So it's still, I say, profound, it's still penetrating, it's still loud, but um, not too intense anymore. Yeah, it's like uh, it settles in the middle, yeah, like the water yeah, gushing, yeah, like the ocean humming, like the wind blowing. Right. And then this um is when the second grand he, right? By the way, the first grand he, the uh, the first stage, actually we're opening or unknotting the first grand he. Grand he are like energetic spiritual knots. They are uh, close for a reason because as they open, you know, we'll be able to experience uh, subconscious and the subconscious holds our karmas, and we have to do this carefully. All right. So the first stage, we are opening or unknotting the Brahma grand he. Yeah, so the Brahma Granti, the sound uh, when our Brahma Granti opens up together with the three bottom chakras, the Muladhara, Swadhisthana, and the Manipura chakra, this produces this low, vibrating, humming, penetrating sound. All right, so going to the future, yeah, your heart opens. Yes, and this is for me the most beautiful. Uh, so this is where the Vishnu Granti opens up. Yeah, when the kundalini energy can freely pass through yeah, the bottom chakras and penetrate yeah, the chest and the uh, upper part of the manipura chakra, so the sound we experience is like uh, moderate, yeah, calm, and quiet and peaceful. All right. So when this happened to me, yeah, um, it was one of Actually, it's the most profound of all my meditation. Yeah. So it was past midnight, I think, yeah, that, that, that particular yeah, instance. I was preparing for my you know, sleep. Yeah. So I was just watching my breath. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so suddenly yeah, this deep sound emerged. And together with that, you know, spontaneously, the energy enters my chest and then lift up inside my brain. Yeah. And then the rest of the experience are similar, like the electricity flowing out of your body, your uh, mind is traveling around. And then after that experience, yeah, my the energy and consciousness yeah, returned so suddenly and like from the outside it entered my chest like piercing inside my chest and like the heart explodes inside like the chest explodes inside and you go deep into that vast yeah, void inside your chest yeah and then your brain could see what's inside your heart yeah and after that experience, everything went black, really pitch black, but you can, you can see so clearly the blackness of the image. Yeah? And just over the horizon yeah, is the white radiance, like a light, yeah, like a line of white light hovering over the pitch black space inside the hut. And then this deep sound emerged. Oh. 
the never ending om yeah i cannot forget yeah that's how the sound actually sounds like yeah. om so deep yeah but um, not loud anymore it's not intense it's not um um wild yeah as compared to the first one where it's really wild um, this one is calm deep but still penetrating yeah so the om yeah the om mantra yeah for me is the most meaningful now the om mantra is universal everyone can practice it there's no contraindication chanting the om because our bodies yeah emit yeah, our energetic system emit that particular frequency during deep sleep without us knowing it our brain witness yeah our minds witness and experience this deep realm inside our body it's just that we're sleeping therefore we're not able to consciously i say experience and understand this but every night we go through this deep yeah, void inside our bodies and this is where uh, dreams happen. Yeah? Therefore, the uh, a restorative, you know, relaxing, you know, deep sleep is important. Sleep is important. Yeah? So you have to make sure you're resting. You don't have to spend many hours sleeping. I say between uh, seven yeah, and nine hours of restorative sleep, depending on your nature as to... Um, yeah, age, yeah, definitely your sleeping hours will reduce, but yeah, make sure you are getting ample enough hours of sleep. I sleep about between seven and eight hours, yeah, six hours if I'm teaching early in the morning, but I try my best to keep or to do an afternoon nap, yeah, so I can, yeah, complete my hours of sleep. So yeah, sleep is very important, really. Yeah, aside from the other off the mat uh, services, lifestyle, relaxation, reduction of mental stress, your practice. Yeah, sleep is important. All right, because sleep, yeah, restores the brain, right, and repairs yeah the the neurons. And during sleep is where yeah, our energetic system opens up. Yeah, to do its work of repairing our bodies. Yeah. Now, um, that particular um, nada. Uh, the second stage is the uh, Parichaya Avasta. Yeah, so the first stage is the Gata Nada. Yeah, that's how we call it. Gata, then the next stage is the Parichaya. And the Om Mantra yeah, helps us attain that deep meditative states. Yeah, what happens during the Parichaya Avasta stage? We promote an abundant flow of the Alpha, Theta, and even the delta brain waves. So these brain waves help us relax, restore, rejuvenate, repair, yeah, good for processing of information and memory. Yeah, so forget about the meditation. Yeah, just think about the health benefit you gain from practicing yeah mantras or listening to sounds for that matter yeah but still you need to uh continue your practice yeah, because the most meaningful is actually the energy or the, the subtleness of our energetic system good now as you gain more i say um efficiency and confidence yeah there's there's no way but to to go towards the higher stage even if you don't do anything anymore once the grantees open up yeah it's not a question of how it's just a question of when yeah so all of this i didn't plan for this i didn't know about them at all this happened to me i wasn't reading i wasn't studying anything i was just practicing and then i just started reading i just started researching yeah after I finished the all stages because I, I need to find out you know, my experiences. And yes, so it's, it's so pleasantly, I was pleasantly surprised to realize there's actually names you know, behind them. Now, the third stage is when the brain opens up. 
all right, the Ashna Chakra, the higher chakras of the spine. And this is now where the Nada becomes melodious. You will hear music. So this the seat of the Rudra, Rudra Ganti. Yeah, when the part, the pituitary glands open opens up, yeah, the brain yeah, becomes so sensitive, yeah, it opens up and then the firing neurons there, the rising energy will blend, you know, with that firing neurons, the cerebrospinal fluid containing the uh, kundalini energy shall stimulate the brain. And um, this awakens you know, our subconscious entities. Now, actually, our subconscious is already opening up as we work on those uh, bottom grantees, but this is where it becomes so, I say, spiritual. Um, I could remember, and this one I cannot forget to, you know, the first time I experienced the uh, music. You know, we call them the um, nishpati, you know, nishpati stage, you know, the, the melody. I was preparing my lunch in the kitchen. I wasn't doing yoga. Yeah, I was preparing my sandwich and this beautiful music just suddenly appeared. Yes, yeah, and I have not heard that music in my life before. Yeah, the way I describe it is this, like this a choir singing and various instruments playing like the orchestra. Yeah, accompanying the choir. Yeah, and I could hear the flute, I could hear other wind instruments, I could hear string instruments, and still the high pitch ohm is there, the never ending of while the other sounds are appearing too. And it's melodious. It's really melody. Yeah, music. All right. And it stayed there for maybe three, four minutes. I can't remember, but so, so beautiful. Yeah, it's like you're listening. It's like they're close, but it's coming from far away. Something like that. Yeah, and then I looked around. Yeah, the house was quiet. I was alone, and it kept playing. Yeah, this lovely melody. It only happened once, right? Now, I experienced the, the chime. Yes, the chime. So close to this sound. So I love playing the sound because every time I play my instruments, my tensions and the bowl, they remind me of those experiences. Yeah. Good. And then the bell, yeah. The sound of the bell, yeah, is similar to that melodious sound, but it kept playing in rhythmic intervals. Now I could hear it on my right if I could oh no, left, my left hemisphere. Because I was lying down, I could feel it on my left. Yeah, left hemisphere, my left side. Yeah, and it lasted for uh, a couple of minutes. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely to hear and listen while <laughs> you you're traveling away. Yeah, so so to speak, the energetic system is so open, and you can control the flow of the energy even externally because this energy, the yeah, ones. It goes inside the brain, yeah, it will exit the sutures there, and the gaps, yeah, the fontanelles, the higher chakras, the sashara chakra, sometimes the chest, sometimes the forehead. And this all leads to the spinning sensation, the traveling sensation. Yeah, but you are perfectly conscious. Yeah, so it's not uh, a trance that you can't remember what's happening. Yeah, you are fully aware of what's happening. So that's the beauty of yoga. So you're in control of everything. Yeah. So when you come back, yeah, so you remain yeah, the same person. It says that you are aware, you're more aware, you're more mindful, yeah, that the are uh, entities yeah, <laughs> beyond this. But this is really the foundation. Right? So my the the essence of this lesson is this. Yeah. 
So the external tools, yes, uh, they will help you if you're lucky to have them. I didn't acquire them until many years after I've worked hard, to, yeah, so to speak, because I, I started really low. I started practically, practically with nothing, just my body. I was so lucky and grateful to have the physical strength and the circumstances agree with my nature, my goals. I have the support around me of my family and this. Yeah, my sacred place, yeah, and my humble mat. And I just enjoy the practice, yeah. You have to enjoy it, yeah. So there's no reason to force a certain technique if you're not loving it. So how can you grow it if every time you do it, you're not happy? So you have to be happy, yeah. So wherever you are at the stage of your practice, grow it. Grow it. And eventually, yeah, your, your awareness... Uh, will go richer, and there's nothing but to you know go to that direction of yeah higher, I, I say consciousness or awareness or yeah understanding yeah really understanding yeah for me understanding is um, more meaningful than knowledge yeah so when we understand yeah our practice when we understand the experiences we encounter. So we become less attached because, you know, they're just there whenever you need those <laughs> your things. <laughs> they won't go away. It's like they're your companion. So because if you focus too much on the knowledge, 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 theory, jargons, and then, yes, it, it, it sounds lovely to have all this knowledge of the books and the texts, but do we understand them really by heart? Yeah, for me, yeah, the understanding is, I say, uh, promotes tolerance. Yeah, it promotes kindness, and yeah, because what's what's in you is in me, and what's in me is in you. It's just that we tackle this journey differently based on our priorities, our obligations, our commitments, and our nature. Um, but if it's your nature, then why not? Yeah, progress. Yeah, seek guidance of a teacher. And then teach and share. And then when you approach your lessons or your life from that perspective of understanding, yeah, so whoever comes along your way is good. Yeah, it's divine. Yeah, it's sacred because you've been there. So that's the essence of my discussion. So thank you for listening and have a meaningful year abundance and blessings to you and your loved ones. See you in the next lesson. Namaste.